Star Wars nearly didn't make it for Star Wars Day, but I pushed things back a little because you know me. I'm Robo. This here's the rewind. Let's start this rewind off with a little controversy, some conspiracy even. Super 7 and a lot of y'all have been pushing this Silverhawks propaganda so hard that poor old Big Bad Toy Store has got swept up in the mass hysteria, the hallucinations. They posted up their exclusive Silverhawks Ultimate Dark Bird this week and it is exactly what you think it is. Yes, it's reuse of Quicksilver. Yes, it is the stereotypical classic cartoon villain recipe. But also, yes, if you buy into the lies, then Dark Bird was the main subject of the sixth episode of the first season of Silverhawks back in the day. You want a complete roster? This is how it's done. You can't bitch about mold reuse of the main hero when the character from the show is animation reuse of the main hero. The description of the episode reads, A mystery Silverhawk blasts his way into Dolaire, the bank planet. He terrorizes Lord Cash, the banking boss of Limbo Galaxy. Does that make any sense? Get it? Dolaire? Cash? Sense? That's, that's why you come back to this channel every week. Are you not entertained? No, you're mad at my fake Silverhawks gag, aren't you? Calm down, it's all a joke. Basically, the premise here is just pure 80s goodness. And what is more 80s than taking the leader of the good guys and altering the design slightly to make it a lackey of the leader of the bad guys? I, just think about it. Eh? Link is in the description if you want to go buy toys of your non-existent property. What? I believe something and I'm putting it on the internet. It must be true and right. Right? Right? Like, I've never seen Shazam 2, Electric Boogaloo of the Gods, or whatever it's called. But I believe it exists because I've seen the first movie. I think this McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Gold Label Amazon exclusive Shazam and Freddie Freeman 2 pack was already officially announced. I believe we've seen pretty pictures of this or mood lighting something beforehand, but it's been a while, I think. But it is Amazon, so they'll post it when they're damn good and ready. And they were damn good and ready this week because the pre-orders finally went up. There's Shazam, there's Freddy. They both reuse the same body, which makes sense. But I will say, after seeing so many figures, well, I say so many figures, I have Mafex, there was Mattel. Yeah, after seeing Shazam in the classic reds and golds, the blue is snazzy, it's pizzazzy. I know it existed before this, but I don't know, that's a nice shade of blue there. I don't know what it is. But I may be even more tempted by Mr. Mind, who I completely missed when I first went through these pictures. Seriously, I glanced several times and it was like, okay, Shazam, there's Freddy, there's Red, there's Blue. And then I kind of looked down at the blurb and saw Mr. Mind. I was like, wait, what? He is in there. But will we see the rest of this crew? Amazon also posted up their exclusive DC Multiverse Gold Label Batman Futures End Glow in the Dark Edition. This is the exact same figure as the Batman Beyond Build-A-Batman, except the black is slightly different and then the paint is missing from the chest. Everything else looks exactly the same. The sculpt of the body, the gun arm, the metal skeleton wings, the flippy guilty or innocent Joker and Batman head. The magic doesn't happen until you turn off the lights, which I guess could be said about a lot of things, but we're, it's not that kind of channel. This is under a black light, but it is crazy how much glow this has and how dynamic they made it by making the line work glow brighter, not to mention the lips and eyebrows. If they didn't show glowy pics or mention it in the description, you couldn't tell that this was glow in the dark. To be fair, some of these pictures are just digitally altered from the Batman Beyond solicitation, but if you look at the package shots, it's still hard to tell. There is a slight pooling of the glow in the dark paint, I guess, but even then, it just looks like a little slop. The biggie this week, though, is the McFarland Toys Gold Label McFarland Toy Store exclusive Batman White Knight Batmobile. I did it! I did it! It was completely natural, too, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Todd teased this last weekend during a panel or a live stream or something. It was him behind a table and this Batmobile sitting in front of it. And I thought, 
I need to save that image so I can talk about that next week. No need for that, and we got the full photo spread now. I, of course, have never read White Knight, but I like the figures that are based on that comic that McFarlane has put out. So this goes right along with them. It feels like the same world. I mean, I was told they're in the same world. It's White Knight. It goes with the White Knight figures. I do like how it comes off as kind of a mix of designs and eras. There's some 89 in there. There's some Tumblr. There's some classic Batmobile with the bat head there in the middle on the front. Are those side mirrors or some kind of comic book tech that I don't understand? Because it's just woo, woo. And then the bat ears on the canopy. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that I thought, oh, that's cheesy. Mm. But then after a couple minutes I didn't even notice. Until I did notice, and then my brain just put those together. To where, yes, it is cheesy, but I like a little cheese with my Batman. It brings a little grin, again and again. It's a silly design, but it's cool at the same time. So, <laughs> there you go. Jumping into some third-party items, hot on the heels of the Rage Toy Samurai Force summer solicitations, here are pictures of their anthropomorphic warthog. <laughs> I don't have a name for it yet. Bleebalop? <laughs> I apologize for that. As we've seen with other figures in this line, there's design changes to differentiate it from the obvious source material. It, it throws some samurai aesthetic in there while still keeping the core feel, the soul of the characters. The pig bun on top, the sandals, the armor, the rope belt. Really, it's changed up enough that if it wasn't associated with the name that we know to now be non-TMNT, it would be fairly harmless as far as IPs go. It's a kick-ass looking animal with human characteristics. But we are talking about Rage Toy Samurai Turtles, so of course there's swappable parts to make it more recognizable. There seems to be alternate lower legs and feet, forearms, and mohawk. There's the glasses, the nose ring, and then everything else is overlays that you can either pull on or put off. That just <laughs> flip that. It's really impressive how different the two looks are when you put them side by side. I don't have anything beyond that. That's how this line goes. We see early prototypes, and then there's some delay, and then other things pop up, and then we get solicitations, but we don't have that now. No pre-order date, no release date, no name, no nothing. Well, I may have missed the name somewhere, but I don't have the name. Let's stick in third party realm and take a look at the fans hobby, I actually don't know what they're calling this. The Cloud Kestrel, the Stratosphere Staniel, the Air Tercel. Why yes, I did look up Sky and Hawk in the online thesaurus and try to come up with names of my own. What, you don't think they did that back in the 80s too? You know they did that and just put words up on the wall and threw darts. Oh, okay, we have the Sky Hawk. Perfect. And really, Sky Hawk? What else could it be? Land Hawk? Water Hawk? Silver Hawk? These things don't exist. A little on the nose, but it works, especially after all these years. It's classic, it's burned in. It sounds right. But we're not talking about naming conventions here. We're talking about a cool vehicle to go with your cool 112 scale figures, whichever line that may be. I think Fans Hobby is known for their third party Transformers, and there they seem to have released quite a few figures. So this should be quality product, at least from what I understand. I don't follow Transformers that closely. Honestly, I'm surprised we haven't seen this in an official capacity yet. It's that sweet spot size that would go on retail shelves or in shipping boxes without being crazy priced. And it's fairly recognizable. If I can look at it and go, oh, okay, I remember that. That's the Skyhawk. Well, okay. I may have had to double check on the name because I wasn't sure, but I recognized it as a casual G.I. Joe fan. So there, there's some face value to that. Same situation here, no info yet, just pretty pictures and a promise of plastic. I didn't realize how many vehicles were on the menu today until just now. We already knew about the Hasbro Marvel Legends Danny Ketch Ghost Rider, but it went up for pre-order this week. That means more pictures to look at. Well, like usual, there's not really anything here that tells us anything we didn't already know, but 
There's this picture where he's just standing in the flame and you can use the motorcycle flames as kind of dial pieces. And then the packaging brings it all together, literally. <laughs> it's everything t t together. The back of the box does set it on fire though, that dynamic background and up in the front. And it shows us something we didn't know. Okay, I lied a minute ago, now that I say that out loud. They may have mentioned the moving foot pegs, but if they did, I either missed it or I forgot all about it. But that's nifty for getting Ghost Rider into different positions. You know what I'm talking about. You've messed with figures on motorcycles before and you get their hands on the handlebars and you get them into that lean that you like and then you look down and, oh, the feet aren't reaching the pedals. Why don't they go all the way? So you have to readjust. Not here. Oh, you get what you want and then you move the foot pegs where you want them. That's cool. I've said several times that Danny was not my spirit of vengeance, but this is so badass that I have to get it. That there's no question. And I guess I'm not the only one feeling that either because it has sold out in a lot of places. If you want to grab it, there's a link to Big Bad Toy Store in the description. It is mainline though, so maybe more will pop up once we get to that release date. There's also more pictures of Warbird. Just a nice update for a figure that we got a long time ago. Sculpted boots, full articulation scheme, alternate heads in case you have a mask or hair preference. This wasn't my version of Carol back in the day. To me, this was a vehicle for Rogue's powers. I was reading a lot of X-Men and you would see flashbacks or Rogue would get this, oh no, what did I do to Miss Marvel? Ah. But over the years, I've come to appreciate this a whole lot more. So much so that this is probably my look for her now. The press package went out for this, so we have newer pictures and more information. This one with the fuller mask and the one power effect on an arm and then the full package contents. I like this because it gives us a side-by-side -side of the heads. It shows exactly what is different between the two of them. We can give it a good once over and plan on which one we want to use. I wonder what the hair pieces would look like swapped or if there's full ears. It kind of looks like that. You can kind of peek into it right there. Hmm. Oh, and package shots too, for those curious. It's back in a window box, and then there's some nice artwork around back. We knew this was Target exclusive, but the new information says it will go up for pre-order next Thursday, May the 9th. But hey, like I said back at the first, it's Star Wars Day, or at least this is going up on May the 4th. Meanwhile, I'm recording on Friday, May the 3rd. I just walked out of the house into here to talk about the fan stream that ended 10, 15 minutes ago. So it's still fresh. It's still raw, it's still new, but we're gonna do this anyway, because it's not worth baby. First, there's the Phantom Menace three pack of Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Maul. This was actually revealed right before the stream over on StarWars.com, just the package shot. And there I thought, well, okay, great. Some repacks, some new cloth robes, not needed. But then during the stream, they confirmed that Maul is all new. And oh, I have several Mauls, but Look, Ma, butterflies. This is very much needed. Now they can melt down those molds for that 10-year-old figure that they've reused several times. No more. Never again. Although, if it's like C-3PO, they'll skip back to that every now and then, but they, they don't need it. They have this. Soft goods between the three of them. I, I, I would like to say that the Jedi have updated photo reel to the faces. Maybe, since they tend to do that with re-releases these days, but I don't know. All I can say is that the Sith is the big draw here, unless you don't have Qui-Gon or Obi-Wan. And then, if you don't, there you go. It is weird that it's a GameStop exclusive, though. Or at least that's what it said in the notes I got. But they did say that it would be available on Pulse tomorrow. Today you're watching it on YouTube, so we'll see how it goes. We already knew that the single carded Super Battle Droid was on its way, but after getting my hands on that two pack that came with the C-3PO headed Battle Droid, oh, give me more of these, because I need all of them. Not all of them, a lot of them. This is great for a couple reasons. One, the two pack wasn't an army builder. You didn't need a pile of floppy C-3PO headed battle droids in order to get more awesome super battle droids. Really, this is one of the best droids we've gotten in Black Series in a while. Right beside the new updated Astromech. Don't think I forgot about those because I haven't. They were on a tear for a bit with tipsy, topsy, turvy robots that would fall over at the slightest glance. You'd just be like, well, shit, there goes that droid again. The super battle droid has none of that. 
you Rubik's cube it into a pose, slap it down, stands, solid, good, great, into the display, done. The two pack was also a specific super battle droid with battle damage or blast shots and dirt. This one's clean, but it still has that dynamic paint job of the gun metals and the grays and the reds and the blues. Oh, oh and did I mention the blast effect? That spices it up too. That's just icing on the cake. I love this figure. It's already top 10 of the year for me. And we're just in May. <laughs> in May. I want more. Oh, and good thing. They're, they're giving us more. Sweet. Then there's Darth Sidious. This got leaked right before the live stream by Hasbro themselves, apparently, in an ad. Or whoever runs the ads or... I don't know. Either way, we knew about this before the live stream, but seeing more of it did not hurt at all. This is awesome for a few reasons. First, it's Darth Sidious. <laughs> Gimme. Second, this is the first figure in the new Revenge of the Sith packaging, so if you're into that, there's that. Three, and this may be a hot subject. There's gonna be people on both sides of the fence, but me, I'm straddled right there on top. I like the soft goods robes, but the plastic hood. This is the best of both worlds. When you have cloth robes, it allows full movement of the body underneath. There's no denying that. It gives it its full posing potential. Sure, it bunches up in places, flat in others, but that's usually manageable. What's not usually manageable is when there is a cloth hood attached to those robes. That just has a mind of its own. It pops up over the head, you get it down here, it pops out here, it goes out the back. It doesn't ever lay down right. So seeing a nicely sculpted, hopefully rubbery hood on this is a welcome surprise. It just looks good draped over the head. And yes, there's a difference. You can see the difference. But another perk of that is that the hood will hold down the shoulders, will hold down the soft goods at least around this area making those look even better. It's a win, win, win for me. Again, I know there's people who despise one or the other and they both have their positives and negatives. This is the middle ground, playing both sides. And what is more appropriate for Sidious? When Sidious first leaked, there was a lot of comments of, well, are we gonna get a prequel Yoda to go along? Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> like people apologize online, get the hell out of here. That It Ain't Easy Being Green 2-pack includes Yoda with an alternate head for fierce lightsaber action, which obviously needs a lightsaber, a hilt, a stick, and then his council chair. Oh, and Gree. There's a clone trooper in there too. I don't know why Gree's always been my favorite commander. It's not because of anything that's done. I just... I guess I just like green. I prefer the camo look. This is apparently based on the comic books, but I also like this too, because I mean, it's green. It is $49.99, the price of two full figures. And Yoda is on that newer, nicer, tiny Yoda body that we saw with Dagobah Luke, wasn't it? But at least they packed him with a lot of extra goodies. It kind of balances the scales. There's another force reference for you. It's better than what we've seen in the past, especially with Grogu. Remember when that's been counted as a third full figure in a pack? And it's like, no, no. I have to admit though, my favorite reveal is the Ahsoka, Captain Enoch, and Night Trooper. Yes, we already knew this was coming thanks to pipeline reveals, but that's how much I want it. I remember that there was a pipeline reveal and it doesn't disappoint, at least for me. The red ribbons being sculpted is a surprise. I thought they would just paint them on there so they could take this trooper and make other night troopers who have different ribbon positionings. But no, they went full out, just sculpted, slapped them on there. Here's this night trooper. Same for Enoch, it has all the needed sculpt differences, even on the back. When they flipped them around, I thought, oh, look, they could have done it but they didn't. All the colors pop, the gold stands out. I, I'm, I'm looking at this kind of like the Super Battle Droid and C-3PO headed Battle Droid 2 pack. It doesn't lend itself to army building, but it's a good start to those troops. Like there, I'm hoping for some Night Trooper singles. Will they change up the sculpt though? Or will they just paint it the same? Or will it just be Stormtroopers with painted on D? Who knows? I just know that I'm grabbing this and hoping for the best. For Popline Reveals, there's nothing too awful earth shattering here. There's the Rebel Fleet Trooper and Stormtrooper 2 pack that's gonna be exclusive to Disney and Pulse. And really, this is just bolstering that army or those armies. 
Hopefully this includes some alternate heads for the Rebel Troopers to add in with the old one. I say old, it's not that old, is it? Oh. The funny thing about the Luke and Leia reveals is that we were just talking about these on our last live stream. Veebs wants to do away with the cloth versions from more than a few years ago, and I don't blame them. I may lack like soft goods, but those were just flat and lifeless. That's not saying these are going to be sculpted. Maybe they're going to give another go at the soft goods. Put some sewing into them, pleat them up, give them some life. I gotta think, especially for Luke, they're gonna do a sculpted shirt. Sculpted dress for Leia will traffic cone her a bit, but then there's probably updated sculpts, photo reel, and they've been killing it there. All the more recent figures have been looking fantastic, so I'm not gonna complain about this. Plus, it's Luke and Leia, not Putting out the main characters every now and then is just shooting themselves in the foot. Then finally there is Dagon, Dagon, Dag Dagon from Jedi Survivor. Can you tell I don't know who this is? I haven't played that game, so I was left just kind of, who? But it looks like it'll be a nice lightsaber wielding type figure. And I've bought figures in the past for less than that. I'll judge that more when we see it in actual plastic. And that's all I have for this week. Like I mentioned, I'm recording this on May 3rd. It's not actually Star Wars Day. It's not May the 4th yet. So maybe there will be more stuff tomorrow. If I miss anything, we'll swing back around. Or a lunch stream of some kind. It's Star Wars. I may not be able to wait. Bit of good news though, I did finally get my Yolo Park Transformers AMK Pro Series G1 Optimus Prime model kit. What an adventure! I almost hate to get it because then I can't keep on with my running gag of not having it and then posting news and me doing updates and just so I could mention it again during a rewind. Oh, here we are. I just did it. Also, yeah, Mondo did announce a 6.5 inch scale real Ghostbusters line, but that was it. Just the announcement. So I'm going to wait to actually see something before talking about it too in depth. I want to see the figures or at least the prototypes. I want to know the prices, the release date, the plan. At the moment, it's just, hey, real Ghostbusters. Announcements are awesome, but I'm a visual top guy. And again, I, I just talked about it, so there you go. As always, special thanks to the Patreon. This week they, well, okay, I posted one picture, but I reviewed the Metacom Mafex Star Wars Mandalorian Recovered Armor Boba Fett. And I promptly took it apart afterwards because I didn't like the legs being brown and they looked a bit big. So here's what I did. I tore up the Mafex and the SH figure arts and kit bashed them together. Here is a tease of that because yes, despite me mentioning it several times in the past few rewinds, there is a play day coming. I took the Mafex upper half and put it on the figure arts lower half, fixed the drapes and I'm still not sure. I think the neck needs to be shortened just a little, but the size is right now. That was another thing about the Mafex. It was too tall. And this doesn't fix the shoulder problem, but he'll look pretty damn sweet standing on the shelf. What else, what else, what else? Oh, X-Men 97, everybody caught up. Holy moly. It's still hitting me right here. There's still scenes where I'm just kinda Whoa, look at that. I'm gonna wait for the remaining episodes and then rewatch the whole season. And I don't do that a whole lot with any of the shows. In fact, I'm liking X-Men 97 so much that I haven't went back and watched past the first episode of Bad Batch yet. I'm waiting for X-Men to end and then I'll just watch the whole Bad Batch season. I know it just finished, but yeah, X-Men, oh, they're just competing for my attention, for my adoration, my love passion for this kind of stuff. I, I I only have so much. My heart's only so big. So seeing both at the same time, ah, that's painful, but painful in a good way. You know how it is. The magic that happens when the lights go off. Right, that's it. We're done. Bye.